Around the world, policing is an odious task which involves the prevention of a wide range of crimes, apprehending criminals, enforcement, and even prosecuting criminals. With the growth in the various duties of the police is the corresponding growth in diverse and newer crimes which surpass the growth of law enforcement capacities of society. Policing globally has gone beyond its traditional scope into what is now known as community policing. Community policing anchors on a systematic relationship between the police and the citizenry. The traditional police roles and functions of law enforcement broaden to include tackling a huge range of community problems from source such that crime is drastically reduced even before the enforcement level because the community is involved in policing tasks. Criminals, after all, reside in the communities. Beyond that, the community becomes a stakeholder in policing activities with amazing results. Nigeria is transiting to community policing to update the local police personnel, their skills, and adapt the new policing model. This special edition of uh, Bridges will look at community policing, what it promises the society as we build a bridge of crime reduction in a sustainable society. Welcome, Amuchima Kojola. Well, we have with me Nigerians today, but leading the discussion is a member of the FCT Police Eminent Persons Forum that deals directly with what we want to examine today, community policing. Uh, let me introduce Ambassador Padin Joku, Ashiwaju, um, lots of, lots of people. Ominoko. <laughs> Maybe, but he, he's today uh, representing, <coughs> you know, the FCT Police Eminent Persons and he's our lead discussions. And as the discussion carries on, the rest of us will let you know who we are. Well, already I said I'm with you, Marco Jola. You're welcome on you Bridges. <laughs> so let, 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 let's start with you. That's up to you, okay. Yes, I, I, yes, I was going to start with you. Yes. Uh, um, we're talking to community policing, and we're looking at responsibility of the community and in, in trying to, well, we say to reduce crime and reduce criminals as such. What's your take? Well, my take is simple. I always tell people that medical doctors, no matter how knowledgeable they are, they will ask you first how you feel, where you feel pain. You, the patient, will guide them as to what to diagnose. They won't be curing you of headache when you have to to uh, nail egg. You will tell them that, look, it's my toe that is pending, and they, they, they start from there. It's uh, being unfair to the police to assume that they will protect us when we don't go close to them and tell them where our problem is, and also ask them what their own problem is. So that that there's a, there has always been a disconnect, so much so that the police had to adopt the saying that the police are your friends, to reassure us that we should come near and help them to help us. Uh, luckily now, it is a policy. Community policing has become a policy. Um, I was present when the Inspector General of Police uh, inaugurated the scheme formally and the idea is that in every police station in every DPO's office there must be people who are disposed to receiving the public gathering information helping the police to help the people instead of the attitude in the past which I think also emanated from a colonial mentality when when the police was Her Majesty's police mm. and was looked at with suspicion. Uh, it trickled down that people 
suspected the police, never trusted them, and hid information from them. So I think uh, with the challenges we're having now, you see the information, information explosion uh, on the social media and, and so on and so forth. We need a new approach to embrace the police, to inform them better, even to equip them. As um, I, I accompanied the Inspector General of Police to the Senate when we went for the hearing of the, of the police trust fund. The idea is that every Nigerian should be contributing something to help the police, not just the money in the budget. Well, I'll take that from you. Uh, yes. And I'll go straight to uh, a, a former police officer who has graciously uh, accepted to be uh, on uh, Bridges today. Uh, we're, we're looking at, beyond any other thing, the foundation of building confidence in Nigerian police. Well, let's, let's, come, let's, let's hit it at the Nigerian police. And using the con this concept of um, community policing, how would it work? Introduce My yourself. name is yes. AIG Charles Ugomo, AIG Dr. Charles Ugomo. I just retired from the Nigerian police force. Uh, community policing is very, very interesting, if really understood and appreciated. It's a culture, it's a model in policing. Community policing deals with neighborhood policing, whereby the police interacts with the members of that community. And that <coughs> community gets to know its policemen. It's interesting in the fact that when this, when this interaction unfolds, the community builds confidence in the Nigerian police. Uh, how do you know it has unfolded? A situation whereby the police and the community have fully interacted, like where the community policing model is really operative. You can see a policeman you know, on foot patrol coming to a door and knocking, and the occupant will be very happy that the policeman has come to his house. He will gladly open the door and the policeman will say, how are you doing? And they will say, fine. He said, okay, I'm just checking on you. And the policeman goes away. He creates that relationship so that the, com the, the occupants of that, of that neighborhood, of that community, can report to the police. This is what is happening in my neighborhood. And the policeman, because of the total interaction between the police and the community, the policemen tend to know the members of that community that to an, an extent, if the policeman is on foot patrol and sees a stranger, he can come to you, might know you, and you say you are so, so, so. You say, I have not seen you in this neighborhood. Okay, he cannot identify members of that uh, community, and then can be able to know when a criminal has infiltrated in that into, society. In, into that society yes. and uh, take appropriate action. Yes, so, um, well, we, uh, Ambassador um, Joko had, you know, said something that, the police had over the years spoken to the police is your friend how do we uh, uh, let, let's go to somebody who mm -hmm. is uh, a community leader uh, uh, um, for me Duke mm -hmm. how would you how, how do we need to reposition this thought for you to know that you must you know you must be out there for the police as they are out there for us yes my name is Fuludu from uh, the International Society of Media and Public Health. I think the onus now is on us because uh, I heard a story in the U.S. once. There was a little girl standing this early this year by the roadside with her school bag, and the policeman approached her and said, little lady, where are you going? She said, I'm going to school. I've been calling my mom. She's not answering. By the time he entered the house, the mom was dead. I think we should not get to that stage of we isolate ourselves, you don't care what your, about what your neighbor does. So in this case, I even had cause to interact with the police. There are changes, yes, there are changes happening. But I think we still need to get to the grassroots, to the people that matter, because for you listening to the telly or hearing something is a different story. But people still have the, diff, uh, the it in their mind that the police is out there and they are different. So I think we need to have maybe a kind of day where the police will have an open day to interact with people, 
or when the, whenever the community is doing anything, let the policemen come, not just to fight crime or to look out for criminals, but just to interact with people, to know that they too are people and they are out in your best interest. I think that may help us to transcend all these divides that have been created over so many years. Because when people hear the police is your friend, they say, ah, you only need to get there. You know, bail is not free. <laughs> so by the time we have one-on-one -on -one interaction, the police have always been removed from the public. If you have anything in the community to do, they should be there, not just as policemen, but as integrated members of the community, so that you see them in another dimension, not wearing uniform. Then you know they are approachable human beings. You know when you have a problem, you can count on them to be there for you. Mm. You, you can you. count on them to, to be, be there, there for, for you. you. Yes. <coughs> Let's take it from the, particularly from the perspective of the youths. Yeah. Um, I remember that at a point, uh, we, w I was in a gathering and the youths were talking about career. And when we spoke about uh, why not join the police, I said, ah, you know, and everybody was like, ah, it's only for some people, no, you really have to be this before you can be in the police. Well, this is part of the confidence building as we yeah. look forward to community policing. Um, and you work with the youths. Yeah. What are the challenges in relating with the police? It's a question of perception. <coughs> Many youths um, would want to work in Mobile, Shell, and so on. It's what they've been told. Someone once said that um, Britons don't drink beer. They drink adverts. How does the police present herself? Lately, you've seen for about two, three years now, the police now comes out in the media to package herself. I've seen them use Nollywood artists to present a certain picture. And then you see it on network news where they, they streamline police now is the, like this and so on. And they brought out some tow lines, like Ambassador said. And then they have created desks. Even when it comes to gender issues, you can walk, I've had it, I need to experience it, that you can walk into a police station and meet a lady like this, well-dressed, and the person speaks to you. I think the police should put her best foot forward. It's exciting to see a retired IG looking dapper and well-dressed and all of that. <laughs> you know, the impression I have of police is that they wear the worst of uniforms <laughs> and, and that the, the dreads of society belong to the police. But I know graduates and top best brains in, you can think of that are in the police. Now, my son was asked, what would you want to be? He said, police. Now. He's five years. And I didn't stop him. I put back. He also loves hip hop. So I said, you know, is that what you want to do? I won't stop him. Because I've seen police work in different climbs. Now, if you look at a few other places, when you look at Dubai, or you look at a few other places, see the kinds of cars they use. Now, I'm beginning to see some of that also in Lagos, a few other states. It does something to the psyche of the average policeman. You know, my people will tell you, the eye eats first before the mouth will eat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's call it spade a spade. The conversation is because the world is moving forward. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from you, sir. My name is James Komolafe from the School of Articulation. I think the idea of community policing is a noble one. But the police, whether force or service, notwithstanding, they will really need to do a whole lot of cascading down what the whole idea and imperatives of community policing is. What do I mean? Number one, they will have to bridge necessarily this long gap, communication gap, activity gap between the police force or service and the people. Number one, they must really come down to the point whereby there will be social awareness down the line. That will foster interaction. It will not impede participation. Mm. Then the society can come up. Mere hearing police, <laughs> and you see a policeman around you, you are beginning to smell a rat. <laughs> what will police do? in order to mellow down some of these issues. Because whether we know it or not, take it or leave it, community policing, I will say as a psychologist that it is 70% psychology and 30% mechanics. It's not enough to say, okay, we'll do it like this, do it like that. You must come down and inform, reorient the people to believe and accept that what you are saying, you are also doing. So we must not only talk it, 
you must go about certain imperatives and a social agenda to work it out. With that, we will come up to the level of police and serve their interest for right. our community. Serve our collective interest, I would say. Yes, Charity, um, I know you're eager to have the microphone on, but th th certain things that he has uh, spoken to that I would want, you know, setting this social agenda that will uh, make the police more acceptable. acceptable. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your take on it? Um, I'm Charity Anaja, and I'm a, an advocate for women and children's rights. And um, I would like to say that women and children always bear the brunt of crime and violence in the society. So when you talk about community policing, no other group would, would demand, desire it more than the women and the children because they are affected even to dehumanizing levels and can be traumatized for, for their lifetime. So what I would like to say is that there should be more sensitization. We have various uh, uh, media that we can actually talk one-on-one. -on -one. It's not enough to go on TV and radio. Why don't we have town hall meetings? Just as he said, we can have a level of interaction that the police can bring forward their best foot and say, we are not just a force, we are at your service. I would like even the first part, because there's a sense of protection that comes when a woman knows that when she is raped, when she is beaten, there's somewhere she can run to and there will be early response. Over, the, over time, we have had uh, uh, complaints from women that we don't have places to go to. You go for women programs, they have issues and they say, the police does not give us any response. We want to change that mindset. We want to change the narrative. And that is why the police should do more, especially for women in the rural areas, to know that you can work with the police. There are people mandated in the community to listen to you. And there's a way they can respond to you that you will get early help, even as the case arises. Mm. Well, we're still on bridges, and uh, joining us now, happily, is the first uh, public relations officer, CSP Moshud Jimo, who promised to be here and is here now. You're welcome on bridges. Uh, thank you so much, man. Right. Well, we're looking at community policing, like uh, I discussed with you earlier, and uh, Nigeria is transiting to community policing to update the local police personnel, their skills, and adopt the new policing model. Now, can you just give us further insight into this? How do you intend to transit and make policing more community friendly? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I will start by saying the President Inspector General of Police, IGP, Brian Putu Idris, MP, MNI, uh, when he came on board, they said the key thing is community engagement because uh, uh, you can't uh, police without the people. It's because the people are there, that's where we are there equally. Uh, the, the community policing have been with us for quite some time now. Uh, but this time around, initially it was brought in like uh, something that's been domesticated, something that is happening in other climb that was brought to Nigeria by <coughs> international uh, uh, organization. Uh, our culture itself is community based because if you look at the way we police in the country, you see that we police by culture. The culture of the people determine how you police them. And that is, I've been ongoing even before independent, where you see people coming together in the community uh, to make arrangements for security, mm, make arrangements for public work, mm -hmm. uh, essentially informal policing mm -hmm. the system have been existing uh, before we have government and we have police and other institutions. So the Inspector General of Police said we have to go back to the drawing board, to the basics. Uh, the Federal Government of Nigeria, under the President and Commander in Chief President Mohamed Buhari, have said uh, this time around the government will champion uh, the costings and the uh, the, the essence of putting community policing in place uh, to be a departure from the past where uh, foreign uh, donors are coming in uh, to uh, uh, teach what is community policing. Okay. The society is so afraid. You talk to one or two people uh, about them reporting to police. They say, ah, by the time you go to police or help a victim, the possibility of the Nigerian police force indicting you it's very evident. Mm -hmm. They will say, oh God, tell us the truth. You may say you don't know about this thing. So how will the Nigerian police force change that orientation? Mm. Is and it possible? Bring in the friendliness to the society. Yes. And yes. not to indict the society. Yes. Like I earlier told you, the community policing is a model. It's a culture. And Nigerian police force launched 
the community policing in 2004 by the then Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogu, in conjunction with the DFID, Department for International Development. In the UK. Okay. And policemen were trained. So prior to that, there was no uh, community policing culture okay, okay. in the Nigerian police force. Mm -hmm. yeah. As this culture evolved, officers were trained in those models and it was implemented. And every police division had a human rights desk officers. Where you report your case and it was building up. But the, the society did not rise to that culture of the police. Oh, they did not understand that it existed. Yeah, so there and should be the sensitization of the society yeah. mm -hmm. Agreed. did not go in tandem okay. with, with the, the culture the and the model of uh, the community, community police. Police. Yeah. That, were, that was where there seemed to be. But right, right now, yes, it has been re relaunched by Inspector General of Police, uh, Ibrahim K. Idris, MPM, uh, uh, MNI. Um, Ambassador, I'll come back quickly to you. Our time is fast spent. <laughs> Creating that synergy within the ambit of where you are sitting on that, commu uh, on that uh, committee, eminent pe persons committee now, how do you intend to, to, to work this out? It's already, um, it's, it, we've started. Okay. You know, a new commissioner, for example, was just brought to FCT. And you needed to see the day we went there people from Abaji, from everywhere, traditional rulers, mm -hmm. all, all sorts of people. We came, we talked with him, and we expressed ourselves. We said, look, the Megadi in your house, your security man, you need to be friendly with him. Because when you go to sleep, he's the person who is awake, watching over you. So also, the police that are supposed to be protecting us here, mm -hmm. we need to know them. We need to be friendly with them. And we told them that the police should come down from their high horse mm -hmm. so that they can interact with us at our mm -hmm. level. One thing, one issue that has featured prominently during this discussion is the, is the uh, you know, engaging police and bringing forth confidence in the police. How do you intend to do this? People trusting the police again, seeing the police as a friend. Oh, thank you so much. You know, Nigerians are good people. When you do the good thing, they appreciate you, they clap for you. And if you do what is not up to, they equally draw your attention to it. And that is why, uh, if I digress a little or reframe rather to say that, if uh, the super ego go and play today and win, people will clap on the streets. But tomorrow, if they didn't win, <laughs> so that's. That's sort of the, the, the psyche that every Nigerian mm -hmm. have. Uh, you know, we, like we said, we're engaging the public, uh, let them to, to get them to the platform of owning the police force. Because there's no doubt, like I said earlier, we police by culture. In some community in Nigeria, one policeman can affect the arrest of four people or more than because of the level of civilization and their orientation. Mm -hmm. Whereas in some community, they may be educated. It may take four policemen to arrest one person because of the level of civilization. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you know, uh, yesterday years on the year past, we have less educated people, but more enlightened people. But nowadays we have more educated people, but less enlightened. Mm -hmm. And it brings to the fore the difficulty that we have to face. You agree with me that in various homes, the mothers, the father, they scare their children with police. That if you don't do this, I'll call police for you. So these people grow up with phobia of the police in mind. Mm -hmm. They don't see the police as where you can run to for help or for assistance. So when they see the police on the street, they get scared. Even something is happening to them. They better keep quiet than wanting to tell somebody that the mother is saying, no, if you don't take your lesson, no, you don't do this accordingly. So we are trying our best to demystify this tendency of people not wanting to come and report to us. And that is why we made accessibility much more possible. The Inspector of Police have directed the Commissioner of Police that the information boxes, complaint boxes and suggestion boxes are located in strategic places in FCT it's being spread wide across the Federation so that you don't need to have a personal contact with the police before you 
make your complaint mm -hmm. no so, but uh, essentially that is what we are doing because uh, when you look at community policing uh, side by side with the confidence of the people that uh, why don't I want to give information to the police uh, the information might get out but you know this culture with us of uh, not taking things seriously is another issue because before you give information to the police it shouldn't be an information that already been divulged and discussed with your family members uh, because by the time you discuss with your children and wives and uh, what you have to give to the police it becomes a secondary information the person that you are giving information about will get to know it before you even get to the level of the police and uh, you turn around and say no it's the police that divulged the, the information and that is why we always have said that meet the head of the section for example, if it is a, a police post, may the, the OC in charge, if it's a division, try and meet the DPO one-on-one -on -one to ensure that you give the information directly to you and the information will be treated. And I want the public listening to us to know that there's nothing uh, so difficult to explain about intelligence. Intelligence is an information that is protected. If you protect an information for us, it becomes an intelligent. But if you don't protect such an information, it will be difficult to make it actionable for mm -hmm. us to work upon. Mm -hmm. So we are trying more and more to build the confidence of the people and to let the police know that they have responsibility uh, to ensure that people have trust and confidence in them. Though we have limitation, and uh, I will let you know that recently, uh, the Inspector General Police directed me to go to Niger State uh, to flag off the launch of Bail is Free. And this time around, we we, we, we produce stickers and, uh, and bill and posters and other, giving it to the people to paste them. Uh, before we shall paste them on police station, uh, that is actually being done across the Federation where you see bail is free written on the station. But let people own this document and paste it on their car. If anybody is asking you for anything, you say, no, look, the IG have said bail is free. So I, I, I wish truly, truly we can continue with this program. But um, I promise you viewers that um, this conversation will continue. And... Um, uh, CSP uh, Force PRO has assured me that we'll be back again with us on Bridges and that time we'll be able to see how far we've gone in terms of community policing and that's very soon I can assure you before the end of the year we'll be back again thanks for coming on Bridges